decolonizing therapy came about because it, it was just like, this way is not working. This very like white Eurocentric way of communicating with people. I have to hide parts of my personality. I have to kind of have a very blank room. Like you want me to do all this? If they want to hug me or they want to give me a pastelon or something that they made, I have to be like, oh, I can't. I'm not asking them to feed me every night. You know? I'm not taking like hundred dollar gifts from my people, but what about bartering? What about leaving our clients and the people that we serve with a sense of feeling like they're also in community with us, that we're not on a hierarchy, you know, and that we're not only pathologizing them. And that's what didn't fit for me. And when I tell you, I've worked in psychiatric hospitals, I've worked on units, a majority of the people I've worked with have had, you know, they've been outliers, you know, and given very intense diagnoses through this very pathologizing system. And they were brilliant people too. They were humans too. They had sexual needs too. They, you know, I just, and so when I started seeing that the very field that I dedicated myself to and loved, and I, I do love it, I love it in many ways, I started seeing that also it was responsible for so much of the pain and violence, putting it back on people. It was gaslighting. You know, like that emotional colonization, it felt like gaslighting, like, well, put it back on them. Why are they asking about you? Why are they this? Put it back on them. And it's like, mm, <laughs> you know, we're two humans having a human exchange and they're sharing all their pain with me. They have a right to know a little bit about me. They have a right to know whether I feel like, why are people poor? Like I, they have a right to know what my stance is on LGBTQIA plus issues. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yes to all of it. <laughs> and then I'm wondering as we close out, given everything you've said, do you, can you share with folks what we can do to support each other, especially in the context of what API Women Lead has been pushing forward, which is solidarity? What can yeah. we do? Yeah. I think what we can do is really take turns holding this like space for one another when it comes to like, for example, like Asian brothers and sisters are under attack in many different ways right now, right? There's a lot of violence being purported. And so, yes, yes, this is something that lots of races and identities have dealt with and still deal with. It doesn't change the fact though, that I think that we need to show solidarity and show up for our people as this violence and the xenophobia is being enacted. So I do think, depending on the situation and how this like Rubik's cube of oppression, right? And like uh, patriarchy and, uh, and pain, how it continues to play out, I think that we need to show up for each other in solidarity. And solidarity sometimes means not just saying, oh, me too, me too. Although I understand that comes from a really pained, traumatic place when people say, well, well, that happens to us. Like, I don't want to like, you know, show support for this population because where were they when we were dealing with A, B, C, and D? And the reality is, um, okay, that's what I would say to that. Like, okay, you have that right. And how are we going to do it better? Mm -hmm. how, how are we going to, how are we going to elevate? How are we going to upgrade in consciousness? How are we going to do it differently? How can we show others how we want it done in the future? What do we want to tell our children? And as I think many, many people say, um, how can we be good ancestors now? Right? I think I've, I've heard Leila Saad say that. Like, how can we be a good ancestor now? And that really sticks with me. So I think in solidarity work, that means like loving on each other, understanding that we don't want to fall to the white supremacist patriarchal ways of dividing and conquering, you know? And really seeing that, you know, people of color and people of indigenous, black, brown, you know, um, identity are, have gone through various forms of colonization and continue to, and we are continue to be abused. And, you know, this United America has colonized and abused many of our countries and bombed and violated many of our homes and ancestries. So... Uh, we really need to look at what the real problem is. <laughs> Rather than like splitting hairs, I'm all about like really stepping up in solidarity and showing up for our brothers and sisters and people and non-binary non, non -binary folks. Mm -hmm. 